Thank you very much, Anna, and good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining our webinar, Introduction to Illumina Design Studio. So, this webinar is really meant to be at the introductory level. If you already have done a 10 plus implicit design, you might not learn a lot today. However, if it's going to be your first custom design, or if you just don't know how to get started for, you know, creating a custom uh, library prep, that will be a good uh, webinar for you. So let's get started. And today, our webinar outline will be the following. We are going to describe first what is Design Studio and what kit to choose. We are then going to go into more detail on implicit DNA for Illumina and then implicit RNA for Illumina. After that, we are going to review a couple of tricks to improve our design. Next, we are going to switch gear with Nextera Flex for Enrichment Custom Design. And finally, we're going to explain what the manifest is before showing a couple of resources. So let's get started with what is Design Studio and what kit to choose on Design Studio. So Design Studio, this is a tool on the Illumina website that is meant to create personalized, unique, library prep kit with custom targeted content. And so it does look like that. So that's on the Illumina website, and this is our page, uh, Design Studio Welcome page. So the first question you might ask is, how do I go there? How do I go to Design Studio? First option is just select uh, designstudio.illumina.com. Please note that to log in Design Studio or creating any new custom design, you will need to sign in with your My Illumina account. So this is free to use, but you need to have um, a My Illumina account. If you have any issue with that, please call, um, please call us. You can also access directly Design Studio from Base Space Sequence Hub. So if you're already there on the Base Space Sequence Hub page, you can see uh, that under the Sequence Hub, you can click there and there's a couple of choice. The first one is Design Studio. So you can also go directly from there. As I just said, Design Studio, it's free to log in and it's free to use. So you can submit as many designs as you want. You're not going to be charged. So now that we know how to get there, let's look at our library preparation kit option. So the first thing you're gonna see on Design Studio when you select your assay is that you have the choice between DNA and ANA. So let's talk about DNA first. For DNA, custom target sequencing, you have the choice between Amplicon-based assay, this is with the AmpliSeq family of kit, and Amplicon-based assay is for smaller region, up to five megabase. With the Amplicon-based assay, you have all the choice between those species shown below. Now, if you have a larger region of interest, you can consider enrichment-based assay that goes up to 15 megabase. This is only for a human sample. Now, maybe you are not working with DNA, maybe you are working with RNA. For RNA, we do have Amplicon custom assay only, and this is also for a human sample only at this point. So let's go right into the topic of implicit DNA for Illumina, which is the first option we can use to create custom content. So let me present you the implicit for Illumina workflow. If we start from DNA, 
on the first step, we are going to do a PCR amplification with those primer here, purple and blue. And those are the AmpliSeq custom panel that we will have designed through Design Studio. We then generate an AmpliCon with those custom primer, right? And on the next step, we're going to remove those primer sequence. After that, we are going to ligate the Illumina adapter in order to make those AmpliCon compatible with the Illumina sequencer. But after a PCR step, that's going to generate a sequencing ready fragment. If you want more detail on the AmpliSeq workflow and all the options uh, for this kit, we Flexibot just presented an AmpliSeq webinar last week, and you can go there to check the recorded webinar. So this is for the workflow. Now, how do we add some custom content for AmpliSeq? So let's go back to Design Studio. You're going to go there on Design Studio and you will click on Start Design. We will select DNA. And you can see that the first choice is AmpliSeq for Illumina Gene or AmpliSeq for Illumina Hotspot. Those are complete custom or made to order design. I'll talk a bit more in the next slide. Gene is for gene or targeted region and is typically a two pool design or more. Hotspot is meant for primary for SNP and very, very small uh, region, and this is a one pool design. We also have the choice of AmpliSeq for Illumina on demand. AmpliSeq for Illumina on demand contains 5,000 pre-tested genes, so pre-tested in the lab. And those genes have non-content that is relevant for inherited disease research, like hereditary cancer, immunodeficiency, etc. So that, that might be also a good source to look at because those genes here have been pre-tested. And we do also have a very nice FAQ for AmpliSeq custom design. And so I, um, the link is here on top of the slide, so you can look at that too. So let me give you more detail on AmpliSeq hotspot versus AmpliSeq gene. So hotspot, we have a very small region of interest, typically a SNP or maybe a small indel. And so we are going to design custom primer across this SNP. And so because we only have SNP in the design, we're going to have non-overlapping AmpliCon, and therefore we're going to have a single pool design. Now, if you're not working with SNP, but you're, you're working with entire gene. So in that case, what we want to avoid is to have neighboring primer in the same pool of oligo, so here in your Eppendorf tube, because they could interfere with one another. So when we have a larger a region that is larger than an AmpliCon, so a gene, for example, you will see here, if you want to cover completely the gene, you will have those three pairs of AmpliCon, right? And so to avoid the blue and the red AmpliCon to overlap, the blue AmpliCon will go in the blue pool, if you will, and the red AmpliCon will go in the red pool. So that way, the neighboring primer do not interfere with one another. So this is for AmpliSeq custom panel. Again, this is a PCR-based assay, and per pool, we can have 12, a, a minimum of 12, up to more than 3,000 AmpliCon. So we have chosen, let's say we want to go with AmpliSeq gene. Now let's look into con configuring our design. So here you see you have the choice to choose a sample type. 
So the cell sample type is regular DNA. That does mean high quality DNA. And here you have the choice between amplicons that are 140, 175, 275, or 375 base pair. Please note that 375 base pair is only compatible with the MySeq because this is the only um, instrument where we have such a long read length. So that's for regular high quality DNA. Now, if you start with FSPE DNA, typically degraded DNA, we do recommend to choose 175 base pair anticon length or even 140. If you are working with FSPE sample, I do recommend you to listen to our recorded FSPE webinar that goes into much more detail on that topic. Now, if you are working with CF or CT DNA, this is typically even more degraded DNA. And so in this case, we will have the choice of 140 base pair amplicon only. And so you can note that the minimum amplicon length is always 140 base pair, and that the maximum is depending on the DNA quality. Okay, so after choosing our type of sample, we are going to start inputting our target. So let's look first for amplicit gene design. So, I chose amplicit gene design, and then I have the choice to add my, my target to first add a gene. So you can see here, you have the choice between CDS or exon only. So what's the difference? So here, if you look in this figure here, basically the exon is the CDS or coding DNA sequence, plus the five prime and the three prime UTR. So you can choose either you just have the coding DNA sequence or the entire exon. Something to keep in mind though, if we do that, if we do add the entire exon, those UTR can have repetitive region and abnormal GC content. It's the same thing, if we were to uh, use coordinate input and add some intronic content. Intron too can have also high GC content and lots of repetition. So something really to always keep in mind when we add target is do I really, really need information coming from that three prime UTR region, for example, because those difficult region can impact the design success in this region. Something also that you have for amplicit um, gene is to use exon padding. So exon padding here, it's up to 25 base pair that can be added to the target region. And that ensures that the region just outside of the exon are covered, for example, splice sites that globally occur for all the genes. I also like to use exon padding to help with uh, increasing the coverage. For some regions that are difficult to design, when we have the choice of exon padding, and Design Studio can play on and have 25 extra bays to be able to add a primer. And so that can really help um, to avoid some gaps. Now, I want to point out a tool that is new on our website. So you, maybe you're trying to add all your genes, but you're even not sure which gene to add. And so a very useful tool we have now on the Illumina website is called the Disease to Gene Finder. And here you find the link. And so basically that's what go, what's going to happen here is you can search by disease of interest. So for example, Alzheimer's disease or heart disease or like 
lots of cancer. So you can just uh, input your um, disease here, and that tool will release a list of ranks of a uh, rank list, sorry, of associated genes that are relevant for that particular disease. And what is really cool, you can then import that list of genes directly into Design Studio. So very nice tool here to help you with the design. So let's go back to our um, Design Studio page. So for implicit gene, first we can add the gene, then we can add coordinate. So here you will uh, explain what chromosome the coordinate is at and what are the start and stop position. As we just mentioned, when added coordinate, please be careful with the type of region you add if you are adding UTR or intronic content. The next option is to add by file. For example, a file that you could have generated from the gene to disease finder, or maybe you already have your file ready, like here, as a CSV type of file. So here you can see on your, uh, on your file, you're going to have here region that corresponds to the coordinate with, with the name of your coordinate, the chromosome location with the start and ending point. Then you can also have the gene, like you can see here, we have added a CP53, for example, and you can precise that if that is the CDS only or if that is the full exon. Now, a new option on Design Studio to add your Amplicon, and it's quite brand new from last, at the end of last year, actually. It's two. Either add Amplicon from a previous custom design, or even from an Illumina community fixed design. So this is also called whitelisting. So if you were clicking there on community and fixed panel, this is going to show you the list of community and fixed panel that can be used. So you will just, for example, you see here, you might be interested by the dementia research panel. You can just click on copy Amplicon. That's going to bring your uh, those Amplicon from the dementia research gene panel into your custom design. And then from that, you can add more Amplicon to have the perfect panel for you. Okay, so that was how to add targets on the Amplicic gene design. Let's now do the same thing for the Amplicic hotspot panel. So here, you can add variants, and so you can see um, the nomenclature of the variant. So here you have DB SNP, for example, that can be added directly. You can also add coordinates. So again, like for the Amplicic gene, you will add the name of the chromosome, the start and the stop position. And so basically that will be plus and minus one from the SNP coordinate. Finally, you can add directly your file either as a CSV or a batch format. And so it will look like that. So here, a region that will be for coordinate. Okay, here the chromosome 10 with the start and ending point. And also you can add directly your SNP or variant. And there's a couple of examples of nomenclature here. After adding all your targets, you will click on the Submit Design. And in the next couple of hours, or maybe the following day, if that's the large design, you're going to get an email from Illumina that your design is ready for review. Okay? And so if you click there, you're going to be able to review your design. At this point, you can still choose to modify your design. Okay? And so you will just click here on Modify the Design. A new feature on Design Studio at this point is to click on See More Solution. And so that will bring you the choice of more solutions to choose from. 
please note that by default, typically this is the best solution that is chosen from. But you can see here, you have all these, uh, for that particular design, you have all these options um, that you can look and see maybe if one particular region will be better, sorry, with, if one particular design will be better, okay? So that's really interesting because maybe you will see, hey, Okay, I see here this, uh, the solution number three has three pool instead of two, but um, my gap will be lower, so maybe a better solution for me. So, so you can look at that. And if you're not sure, it's a great time to call Illumina Tech Support or to email us and we can look into that together. Now, I would like to go into MPSIC ANA for Illumina. So, MPSIC for ANA for Illumina workflow, very similar to what we already discussed for the DNA, except obviously that you're going to start with ANA, which means we need to do a reverse transcription. But once we obtain cDNA, this is exactly the same. We are going to do our PCR with our AmpliSeq custom RNA panel, generate that AmpliCon here with the purple and blue primer, remove those primer sequence, ligate the Illumina adapter, and after a step of PCR, we're going to have a sequencing ready fragment. And here you have the link uh, for the library prep kit for MPC custom and a panel. So now let's look at the option for MPC for MPC ANA. So MPC custom ANA that will be only with a human HG19 genome built. And so you have the choice of MPC for Illumina expression and anti-seq for Illumina fusion. I also wanted to point out, we have an older kit that is called the TrueSeq targeted RNA. This is also a PCR-based approach that will allow you to use samples from human mouth and rat, if you are interested. So, but let's go back to anti-seq RNA custom options. So the first one is the AmpliSeq custom RNA, and this can be used to measure gene expression from, we need at least 12 target genes, up to 1,200 target genes in a single assay. Here you will be able to choose the target gene from a menu of over 20,000 human RefSeq genes. And so here on the right, you can see uh, the read lengths that are suggested for this, um, for this kit. Now we also have a newer kit that is called the Amplici Custom and Fusion. So that's really interesting if, you're, interesting if you're looking at fusion and fusion partner. And so here we can use it to detect up to 1200 fusion and also expression target in a single assay. Here you will be able to choose from over 1,000 gene fusion and again 20,000 graphic genes. Those two kits, it's human HG19 only. So if we are working with amplific and expression design, now we want to add our target, very similar to what we already discussed for DNA. We can first add the gene, add transcript, or upload a file, okay? And of course, at the end, you will click submit the design after uh, adding all your targets. Here, maximum 1,200 targets, okay? Now, for the amplific and fusion design. We can also add by gene transcript and upload file, but very interestingly, we can add by fusion. 
Um, here you can click on search symbol pair to look at what fusion of interests are available into this uh, panel. And so it's going to look like that for the fusion. Uh, you're going to have the donor gene ID, the acceptor gene, uh, breakpoint in the donor, breakpoint in the acceptor gene, and publication if available. So you can add by fusion, you can add by gene, by transcript, or directly upload the file. After that, you will click submit your design. And again, in the next few hours, or maybe the next day, you're going to get an email from Illumina that your design is ready to review. And so, that's going to look like that. This is your MTC and a review design page. From that, you can select download target, also download results to get the manifest. And I'll talk about the manifest at the end of this webinar. Here, and I'm going to talk about that in the next section, you can see that after each gene name, you have a little symbol that you can click on, and that's going to bring you to the UCSC genome browser. So I'm going to discuss about that now. We have starting our design. We have got our design back. Now we wanted to make sure. Is that the best design for my project, or can I improve it some more? So, let's look into that. Let's review that MP6 design. So, what will be really important when you get your design is number one, to review everything that is on the left. Please note that once you have ordered that design, you cannot do any modification anymore. So this is really critical to very carefully review that design before ordering it. Again, if you are not sure, this is a great moment to call tech support. We can help you further with that, okay? So when you want to review your design, the first thing you might notice here is the coverage. So here I see 95%. That's not bad, but maybe I can have better. On the left side, you're going to have lots of important information. Okay, your solution ID, but then you can double check what assay is that. Okay, yes, I am working with AmpliSeq DNA gene. Uh, yes, I'm working with human sample. My type of sample was regular, good quality DNA. Yes, the amplicon length, which was stringency high. Okay, and also importantly, you will see the number of pool. So first thing you check on that, you check your coverage, and then you see if, hey, maybe we want to get that coverage at 99%, if that is possible. So you will look at your region that are covered. And so here you can see, uh, it's a little small, but after the coverage percentage, you have that little icon that will bring you to the UCSC uh, genome browser. Okay. Then we have the amplicon list, and then we do have the gaps. So, the gap, that means that Design Studio had not been able to place an amplicon pair there. And that's what we are going to try to review now. Why is that the case? What's going on? So, we select on that link to the UCSC genome browser. So here we will go outside of the Illumina and Design Studio website and go to UCSC. Again, it's free to use. And so it's going to look like that. So 
if that's your first design, it can be quite overwhelming to review it on UCSC Genome Browser. Something to note is there's going to be a lot of tracks that are displayed. You can change that, and you can only choose the track that you really care about. You can see here that you can also move your display to the left or to the right, basically, and you can also zoom in or zoom out to have a better view of your design. So there is a lot of things to look at that you see as the Genome Browser, but this is a really powerful tool. So in yellow, that's going to be our target. That's what we've been inputting into Design Studio. In green, those are the applicants that have been designed by Design Studio. In red, those are the gaps. So that means that Design Studio has not been able to place an applicant pair here, even if we are in a region that has been uh, inputted into Design Studio as a target. Here, I have added some tracks to have a better understanding on what's going on, why I have those gaps. So one of the tracks that I think is really helpful to review the gap and the design is the GC percentage. Another one is the SNP, as well as the repeated region. So let's zoom in to have a better understanding on what's going on. So I zoom in, okay, and so here um, we do have our target uh, in yellow, right? And so in green, those are the implicons. In red, the gap. And so we can see here, we have that gap here right in the middle of the target. And so what's going on here? Uh, why, why Design Studio was not able to place a primer pair there. And so if we look at the SNP track, we can see that at that exact position, we do have a common SNP. And so because of that, Design Studio had not been able to place a primer pair, therefore we do have a gap. So. Common cause for gap, as we just say in that example, a SNP in the primer region. Also, homolog gene. If you have some homolog uh, in the same design, that can uh, lead the um, you know low de designability. So the way on will be to split the homolog into separate pool. Repeated region is a factor too, as well as abnormal GC content. If we do have region with higher than 80% GC, that's going to be hard to design against. So the question at this point is really, hey, do I really need to have that target? Maybe I need to do some modification. Or hey, maybe that target is belonging to a UTR or intronic region, and maybe we just don't really need uh, a primer pair there. So maybe no big deal. Now, if you need uh, and decide to make some change to that implicit design, we will go there, back to the review design screen, and click on modify the design. OK? Um, and so something to note is that going Clicking on modify the design will always keep your old design, but it's going to make a new copy with change. And so you're going to have that window popping up. Okay? So uh, that was the main part of our webinar, focusing on AmpliSeq custom design. But I want to also talk about enrichment custom design. And so for that, we're going to use another workflow, which is called Nextera Flex for Enrichment. So here it's a bit different. 
type of workflow. This is not PCA based. This is enrichment based. So enrichment custom design can be really helpful if you do have a large region up to 15 megabits. So here, the way it will work is you have your DNA input, and we're going to fragment that DNA input with a bead link transposon. So our library is, our DNA is then fragmented, and we're going to add index PCR timer to make those library compatible with the Illumina sequencer. So at this point, basically, we have our whole genome sequencing library, and we need to enrich that for a custom target region of interest. So that will be on the right side of the assay. You, you're going to pull your library together and then add your biotinimulated bio custom probe panel, okay? Then you will enrich those probes using streptavid in magnetic beads. And finally, to enrich the library, you will elute uh, from those bits. Okay, so at the end, you're going to have a library that's ready for sequencing and that has been enriched for your custom region of interest. So, the, uh, I want to say also, if you're working with Nexia Flex for Enrichment, we do have recorded webinar on the Illumina website. So, the main difference between enrichment and Ampicon that with enrichment, the probe does not have to sit directly on top of the target region. It can be sitting a bit upstream or downstream. Also, some off-target region will be sequenced. So now that we described the workflow, let's go back to Design Studio. So here, let's go back on our design studio page. We will select DNA and then enrichment. Again, the only available genome is human HG19. You will name your design and then choose your design. The only option at this point is fully custom. So you can click that. And then you will be able to enter your target. So we have four options here for the enrichment workflow. The first one is to add genes, so that's going to be CDS or exon only or full region. So here you can choose to include the three prime and the five prime new tier, and you can see by default the probe spacing is standard, and I will talk a bit more about that. The next option is free text, where you can just add uh, your list of targets directly in that box. And then you can also add coordinates. Again, coordinates are based of the HG19. And finally, you can add your file. So quite similar to Amplisic Design. But here we can choose our probe spacing. So you might wonder what's the best option here. So by default, again, the standard spacing is chosen. That really fits most of the enrichment need and is the most cost effective. So standard probe spacing means that the distance between the center of two adjacent probe is 230 base pair. But then you have all this choice. You can choose standard, intermediate, dense, adjacent, or even overlapping. So here, as an example, adjacent, that means that the probe are really next to each other. We don't have any gaps between those probes. And so the distance between the center of two adjacent probes will be 80 base pair. So why, why do we want to change that? So, Generally, it's best to use same density across all the targets to ensure coverage uniformity. But that can be changed for regions that we know are difficult. Or maybe we have some region that we want a higher desired depth. 
So if you want a particular gene with much higher coverage compared to the rest of your target, you can uh, you can do duplicate. You can add your target twice on Design Studio to increase the coverage of that particular target. So that's going to work like that. You're going to start your design. And as soon as you add a target, the design automatically begins. This is different than uh, AmpliSeq because AmpliSeq, you need to add all your targets first because Design Studio is going to check that all the Amplicons are not interacting with one another or all the primers, should I say. So, um, you start your design, the design begins automatically, and then you can click here to uh, review the design. So, here we can review our design. We see we have a coverage at 99%. Not too bad, but maybe we can have a look uh, into that. So here we have our selected target, the target length probe. So in that particular case, the design is too small, so we will get um, a message here. We can also see the number of gaps and the total gap length. So we can look more into that and trying to see why we have gaps, what's going on. And so here, after each target, we do have a little UCSC sign. And as you can imagine, that's where to click to go to the UCSC genome browser. With an enrichment design, you can have what is called warning. So you see here, you have a colon, the third to the right, that is design warning that's going to give you maybe some warning for some particular target region. So why we will have such warning? So something to keep in mind is enrichment workflow work quite well with Intron and UTR compared to Amplicon workflow. But we can have warning because there's a low specificity, a poor GC content, or duplicate target that maybe we've done in purpose, but maybe it's a mistake. So those warning can lead to lower coverage, so it's best to review them and see what we want to do with that. But if you get a warning, you can still go ahead with your design, okay? So to optimize, the next pair of select for enrichment custom design, what can be done is to submit the target region with warning for a design with different probe spacing. We can also change the target region to avoid poor specificity region, for example, skipping the target. We can also keep in mind that the probe don't have to place to be placed directly on those difficult regions for the difficult region to be pulled down. They can be placed just upstream or downstream. The design warning is really just a warning. It does not mean that your design will not work, but it's a great time to review that design and make sure that, you know, our design is correct. Once again, when we do place our order at this point, we cannot modify the design anymore. So it's really important to review um, carefully the design before ordering. All right. So I mentioned a couple of times, hey, we can download the manifest. So what, 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 what is that? What is the manifest? So the manifest will be available for all your custom project, you can recover that from Design Studio. And so the manifest, it's a file that will specify the targeted region, target and probe genomic coordinate. And it's going to be used during the bioinformatics, during the alignment of the sequencing grid. So the following bioinformatic analysis will require a manifest, so DNA amplicon, DNA enrichment and RNA amplicon. Okay, so that way, after sequencing, we make sure that our um, 
Si kon fin rida a lining to a custom targeted region of interest, right? So here we do have a very nice bulletin on how to convert a custom bed file into an enrichment, uh, sorry, into a manifest file. So now you might wonder, hey, maybe somebody is doing the bioinformatics for you. You need to provide them with your manifest. How do we get that? So implicit for Illumina, as soon as you design the project, the manifest will be available. And so if you go back to your design studio page, for example, we need to get a manifest for MPC and expression. So that will be here. You click your project of interest, you click on the select, and then you have the manifest that can be downloaded. For next are select for enrichment custom, the manifest file become available only once the order ships. So if we download the manifest, how does that look? So here is for MPC. So we have a couple of information. Here it's built on HG19. And so we're going to have the ULS or DLS, so, uh, which are 25 base pair of sequence flanking the insert. Be careful, those are not the primer sequence uh, that are not uh, disclosed here for MPC for Illumina. So you're going to have also your target list with uh, the chromosome uh, position, okay? And similarly, for next year, sex enrichment, here we're going to have two uh, manifests, one for the probe and one for the targeted region, okay? So after going through all that, I would like to leave you with a couple of resources. So there is tons of useful resources on the Illumina website that you can look into. First, the library prep kit selector. Then we have Numeros recorded webinar. We also have the Design Studio online help menu that is really helpful. You can also refer to the implicit product page and its FAQ as well as the next aspects enrichment product page. Finally, there are also some nice training class, and we do have two about Design Studio that I suggest you to, to double check. And so that was it for this presentation. So I really want to thank you for taking the time to attend. And now we're going to look to see if there's any questions. 